for both of you, you obviously traveled to every corner of this particularly magic city and saw sites that even as veteran Chicagoans had to totally surprise you. Like the Denison's following the Yellow Brick Road, what was the most amazing site or part of Oz Chicago that mm -hmm. totally awed you that you hadn't experienced before? <laughs> Oh, what wow. a question. I'm going to let Zach go first. Well, that. the first thing that comes to mind without thinking too deeply is um, that you can duck hunt in the city limits. <laughs> I mean, you can actually have a gun with a permit and fire it at an animal and it's legal. And then you can eat it, presumably, if that's what, you know, I, I, that just kind of blew my mind uh, that you can do that. That's very Aussie. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, I, I, I think that's a, that's a great answer. I, you know, I think in, in a more serious, mm -hmm. uh, direction for me, I, I think I was surprised at, at how during the Laquan McDonald trial, mm -hmm. um, that there were parts of Chicago and principally the black part of Chicago. And I'm not trying to say white people weren't engaged at all. Cause there were plenty of white people that were right but that there were parts and neighborhoods of Chicago, particularly black neighborhoods, where this was truly the trial of the century. This, mm -hmm. this, was, this was the most single most important trial in Chicago in memory. And, and yet in other parts of Chicago, and you see that in, you know, in, the, in the series, people are just really not paying attention at all or hardly at all, and because it, it doesn't, in their view, affect them. It doesn't have anything to do with them. Mm -hmm. And I was just, that really took me back. I, I, I get it in a way, but in another way, I just feel like that speaks to the divisions, not only within Chicago, but within this country. Uh -huh. uh, both of you, again, one of my favorite quotes has to, has to do with the OJ trial, that white people were mad about a verdict that came from a system that their privilege invented. We see many examples of white privilege and out and out racism on display in the documentary. Why do you think white people can't understand the truth of a system that they invented and that we can no longer abide? I'm not an expert on any of this, but um, I, you know, I, I've, like a lot of people have been doing more and more reading of late about, um, these issues of white privilege. And, and certainly one of the things that has stood out to me is that it is hard to see white privilege if, you have, if you're a white person without um, doing some serious reflection and thinking about it because mm -hmm. it is the world we live in. And, um, and I think there's a tendency to look at uh, things like the civil rights movement and and the progress, the very legitimate progress that people of color have made in this country, which is, mm -hmm. you know, indisputable, and think, well, okay, it's, we're all fine now. We just had a black president, didn't we? Mm -hmm. um, and so I think it is hard. I think it requires, it, it requires a great deal of thoughtfulness and reflection. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that was really, I think, really encouraging to us on, in doing episode five was, and you saw that we asked people about white participation in this movement in a couple of places, is, you know, to see just how many white people were engaged in peaceful protest um, and callings for change uh, all across Chicago. People were, you know, we shot a rally at 79th Street with that Rhymefest speaks at. I would venture to say the vast majority of those white people that were there had never been to that neighborhood before. Hmm. Um, and yet they did. They went there, they participated, they marched. And, you know, these are people who are marching, uh, they're marching over causes that aren't directly in their lives. Uh -huh. You know, they're not living in neighborhoods that are besieged with violence. They're not, they're not dealing with police the way black people are dealing with police. And so I, I took some real inspiration from that. I, I, I hope it's here to stay, and I hope it's, it's, it's goes beyond just this election. Hmm. But I do, I did, I was inspired by the level of engagement that we were seeing in the streets. It's been hard for me sometimes, but I, I think it's hard for a lot of people. It's a shared sort of difficulty to, you know, reflect on your own attitudes, biases that you may not have been aware of, think, you know, thoughts, you know, we were taught things that were right and wrong, uh, you know, growing up. And 
and you know this is an, this is sort of a this the reckoning that we're going through now is challenging a lot of what we were taught and what we believed to be true uh you know in some ways or in in subtle ways in and and it, you know i think that the, the 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 reflection on that is is difficult sometimes very good steve i was happy to see that you pointed out the undercover agent provocateurs that infiltrated the peaceful protests hmm. unfortunately the police won't believe that there are forces out to make the protesters look bad and lump them all together how can we convince law enforcement that sometimes they are being manipulated by this system of disruption? Well, I, I mean, I certainly hope that, um, you know, we, we found a way to show that um, that's, yeah. that's meaningful and, and eye-opening for a lot of people, because I do think there is this, and, and you know, our president uh, uh, has a tendency to, to um, misrepresent all of that for political gain and uh, and out of ignorance, um, so I think we just have to keep at it. Um, and and I think that um, uh, you know that was a really tricky thing for us to navigate in the in the in the episode five because yeah. we I mean we had many conversations about that in the edit room about how we wanted to show that the overwhelming um, protests were were peaceful. And and uh, and and earnest, um, and that, but that there were there were problems that came up, and 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 understand what what the source of many of those problems were, or how people felt about it, and and that people feel differently, you know, that there are people in the black community who were very unhappy with the the looting that went on in their communities, clearly. Um, and then there were people that felt like it was making a statement, uh, you know, too, about, about the world we live in. So it's a complex reality we're living in, and we're trying to do our best to, to, to do it with responsible, responsibly, um, but in a way that gets people to really think about it. This is Patrick McDonald for HollywoodChicago.com.